Well, there was sort of a remake that happened somewhat recently, but didn't do so well. But I never was in, wasn't really that big of a fan. I mean, it had it for the S64, Turok. I mean, yeah. I played a little bit of the first one. I had the second one. I just had it such a hard time. Because Acclaim in that day, they had bosses that healed themselves. And it's <laughs> so goddamn annoying. Yeah. I even remember when they made the South Park shooter, first person shooter game, and that was, I could not beat it because the guy kept healing himself and he would not stop healing himself, and you could not stop him from healing himself. Right. But I don't even know how you could beat that game, but it, it, that was just me. So I actually didn't beat the game, but I actually really enjoyed the gameplay in it. Like, I liked the setting, I liked the weapons that were used in there. Um, I, I remember the bow, there was like a lot of stuff with the bow and how you could use it in different ways. And, I don't know, it, it was just a pretty awesome game to play. And I, it, it definitely fell short. Like, it was really hard to figure out where the hell you were mm -hmm. most of the time. Yeah. Um, but I think if they updated to modern graphics, you know, where you can get a better sense of where you're at, um, it would be, it would be, like, it would be a great reboot. Now, I haven't played the one that came out in 2008, 2009. Um, apparently it was not very good. <laughs> um, but that doesn't mean they can't try again, right? Maybe, <laughs> no? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, maybe. maybe not. But, I don't know, I just never was going to do it in Turok. There have been other successful reboots and remakes. Uh, you have like the Fallout 3, which it was kind of it was kind of like a reboot in a way. I mean, it was still kept true to some of the aspects of the original game, just from what I understand. Because I never played the original Fallout, but I had played Fallout 3. It was basically the targeting system, the VAT system, where you would target someone, and that there was this, had a lot of nostalgic to it, and the whole uh, apocalyptic uh, world to it, and the, the 50s sort of. Nostalgia this with it. One of the special pillars. Right, this is I'm saying this one. Yeah, this is one of them. I have to. I got a target. I'll do it. Right. Oh, it's a Reaper. I remember this thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a <laughs> and now, now Reaper to us is something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reaper. Reaper is that Mass Effect. Yeah. <laughs> Anime. Yeah. <laughs> Much more terrible than this weird looking yeah. inaccurate gun. Yes. Watch it, watch it, they're spawning. Oh you can't, can't just keep running through it. They spawn it. I'm just grinding them. Just grinding them. Alright, this gun sucks. Yeah, I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was. But that's, back to Fallout, it was like thrown into a first person shooter. Some people were annoyed with that, but then when they played the game, it was really cool. Yeah. And another game that was similar to that was uh, Metroid. That was always a, a 2D uh, side scroller, and it was, uh, and basically that was, and that was thrown into a first-person shooter setting. Do you have the under my wrong thing? Uh, stand back. So, it, it was still had a lot of the same elements: the whole backtracking and exploring different areas, and getting upgrades for yourself. So, yeah, it was very. Very much like, very much like the original one, but but it was still very, it was still very different. But those kind of worked. So I only got to play Metroid Prime, and I oh, and it's fun. It's really, I forgot about. Um, I I got into Echoes, the second one, but I didn't beat it, and I I guess I somewhat sort of lost interest. I'll get this. I'll get this. Yeah, my, it's like we, it looks like we can do that. Get the, the one of us kind of guess. Okay. Um, yeah. So that yeah, just we I blew up another pillar that wasn't one of the ones. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. So. And I never did play the other third venture. Game, that is. I, I tried playing the first one and it just <laughs> it didn't go well for me. Yeah. It was interesting though. I I, I I liked it or so. I might and I liked also that's another example of female characters. I mean that was the big reveal at the end of the original Metroid. Right. Like, she's a woman. The woman. <laughs> then probably people freaked out about that too or so, but I mean it really, really just showed that it didn't matter. 
because she was basically perhaps homosexual. And one of the criticisms, I heard a pretty good criticism back in the G4 days where they criticized a recent uh, Metroid game where they're kind of making her like a sissy girl in a way, like a little... Yeah, what was um, it? Other M or something like yeah, that? Yeah, Other M or something where she was like taking orders for some, some man or so and, you know, who was giving her orders to unlock her upgrades like that's how it was featured because he was ordering her to unlock certain things it's like this is this is samus aran she's yeah. a fucking badass she saved the galaxy a ton of times and you just some fucking punk is telling her what to do it's like it seems ridiculous yeah. and i very good very good critique of what they seem like they were doing with the game but it, 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 like i said i didn't play the game so i can't be completely fair with that but right and it, it just seems weird for like you know they, they were trying to make a narrative did you get it which one I don't know. Do you have it? No, I don't. I don't know. Did we miss something? Oh, well, we got it. Uh, we're, we're okay. We got extra ammo with that whole thing. Um, so, yeah. That was it. It was in it. It was, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I I Well, maybe one of these days I'll get back. I'll maybe add it to a long bucket list or so. Or a year to Yeah. Play it again. I still have the GameCube, so I'll get this thing. It's a the NS uh, it's, it's like the first physics puzzle ever. Yeah, and it's very annoying because you could push it off the edge. Right. Or get stuck or something. Well, yeah, it's like weird. You get like invisible walls on this sometimes, and it's not very yeah. accurate. Yeah, the pushing mechanics in this game were not. All right, like, I got it. Yeah, <laughs> just not. And then make, you know, let one person open the door. So these doors are very weird. Okay. So yeah, so that's that's probably a pretty good uh, list of our reboots and stuff that you know we either sequels, reboots, yeah. and HD, we... yeah, HD re-releases. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so, so something that's been pretty big with me, especially you know with my first game being Braid that I you know, made videos of. Um, yeah, it's mm -hmm. dark here. Oh, shoot. Let's see. Um, so... So careful, they have Devastators here. Oh, do they? I don't get a... A Rhyme, a, a, a yeah, Slayer... Slayer, yeah. <laughs> they're gonna shoot their own people. Yeah, they blow themselves up with these things. You were saying? Oh, um, Braid. Yeah, so Braid, you know, is, uh, it's an art game. Um, has a unique style. Yeah, it has a unique style, has a unique gameplay. Um, and one of the questions that I think people have been asking recently, more, yeah, more recently than ever, yeah. is, you know, are games art, like, you know, are video games in an interactive form where people can play them, are they considered art? And I feel. Yeah, it's really got dark at times. It's <laughs> annoying. Um, and I feel at this point the answer is overall yes. So, um, so for people who don't know, uh, Flower, made by that game company, um, was just recently put permanently into the Smithsonian as a art modern art, art piece. Like it, it's part of I, I forget what the exhibit it is, but it's not like a temporary thing or be there forever. Like they, they now have people maintaining a PlayStation 3 to make sure that flower will always be able to work <laughs> and people can interact just with it. Or actually just to kill more time. Oh, no. I don't know. Um, yeah. um so yeah so I I feel at this point it's a resounding yes. Um, but uh, I, I feel like people outside, especially outside of the community, um, yeah. don't actually see that. Yeah. Um, so you know, mostly also that the that the consumer can like can uh, can affect the art in a way, like right. so design it, so you have different experience of it. But I guess that sort of goes back with the whole idea of art, though, in a way that everyone can have a different experience from it or so. Right, and it means something to everybody else. Yeah. Um, yeah. You you played a lot more indie games than I have, or so you played Braid, you played Journey and uh, Flower, but uh, like other ones like that. Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, 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 Infinite Swan. Yeah, that. Um, I actually haven't played it yet, but I've read a lot about it. Basically, it's the game revolves around 
from throwing paint at like a canvas in a 3D world. Um, and and it maps out. Yeah, ma it basically creates the world around you. And it's, you know, it's essentially kind of like a puzzle game with paint. Um, and it's just crazy, like how it just all works out. Um, and I, I think one of the more like mainstream art games, like I would consider an art game, would be Bioshock. Yeah. Um, without a doubt. Um, oh shit, that's probably on right, right here. Yep. <laughs> I, I remember the first time I did the boss fight, I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah, I had to like use a stack and dive for it. Oh, there's a nice spot. Well, you are saying about Bioshock, and one of the reasons it's like so big is just the way, the way I define it so much as being... Oh, that's a bad title. <laughs> Well, um, supposedly flipped and ran from yeah, there. Like, you so. see what happens. <laughs> yeah. But basically, that the whole twist in the game was, is basically. Should I say, I guess, spoiler alert? Should I yes. just say it? Spoiler, spoiler alert. alert. When you play the game, for God's sake, stop. If you have not played Bioshock, stop watching this mm -hmm. and go play it. It's an amazing game. Yes. Basically, in the big reveal or so, when it's revealed that your character is being mind controlled the whole time by the phrase, would you kindly, mm -hmm. is just a huge reveal because in the way that games are played, you have to eventually follow your objectives or whatever or keep going along the path that's in front of you in order to progress the game. And, and it's almost disguised by the fact that this guy is telling right. you to do this stuff and you're just going along and doing it and you can't move any further without progressing in the game. Mm -hmm. So you're just... You're following, listen to what he says or so, because basically that's the only way to progress, but not because you think you have a choice, though. But what you don't even realize when you're playing it is that you don't, your character does not have a choice because he is being controlled by those for it, by that well, phrase. And, but, in, you know, in fourth wall breaking thing, he yeah. has no choice because he's part of a video game yeah. that has a desired path for you to yeah. walk along. Yeah. And that then. And but even so, you're able to do it at your own pace, right, though. You, right. But eventually, you do have to follow yeah. that path. Like right. you can backtrack a bit, you can take out enemies, or yeah. do it in a certain you way. Do like side, yeah. And that's, that's one thing right. that he never said. Would you kindly kill a little sister? And that's another aspect of the game where you have a choice. Right. He never said, "Would you kindly kill a little yeah, sister?" That's, that's or else crazy. then then it would have defied the whole thing. But but that was the thing. That was the one thing you gave the choice in it. Right. So we barely reached the end of the game, mm -hmm. but uh, we can play a few of the bonus missions, I guess, for the hell of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll have to continue. Yeah.